Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. What are you struggling with? Let's talk about it. Your health and your life. So if you're struggling with something right now and you want to get better, you're at the right place. We want to help you take where you are right now in your current state of health to where you need to be. So many people are struggling today, and I want to encourage you to go to the website. There you'll find all kinds of health information. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, just check out the website. We'll be able to help you along the way. Go to the phones, and let's talk with Ruby. Hi, Ruby. I'm calling. Uh, I wanted to know, we just found out my husband has cancer. He has a lump in his neck, and it's cancerous. And I would like to know, you know, what point of what he can do make his body healthy, healthier with vitamins and stuff. When it comes to cancer, I've got my personal opinions are this. If you got a tumor, if you got a lump, I think conventional treatment is a is a great way to go because there are a lot of great things that can go along with that. And of course, if it's a lump, a lot of times it is a good idea to have surgery, get good margins around it. And then, of course, now radiation and any kind of chemotherapy is up to the oncology team and what they suggest. And you really need to go with what they say. Now, with that said, the reason I say this because a lot of people will say, well, I want to go alternative and, you know, I just want to, like, drink barley greens and, you know, I'm going to juice everything and, and I'm going to be healed. Well, it doesn't work like that. It's not that easy. Remember that 80% of the body breaks down before we ever get our first symptom. That's a big key statement to understand. So by the time something's broken down or by the time you can see the tumor, right, it's been growing for a long time. Matter of fact, they say it takes about 10 years for that first tumor to, to be where you can see it or it can be detrimental enough to affect your health. So what you want to do is you have to have somebody managing rebuilding the good healthy cells, working on the nutrition, working on the nutritional deficiencies, whether it's a, a dietitian or another physician, someone that can manage your overall lifestyle choices because all the research has told us, even when it comes down to cancer cells, that your lifestyle matters, whether you have a toxic environment, toxic relationships, or or what, but having really, really good support around you, having a good environment around you, all of that makes a really big difference, especially when you're dealing with cancer at any level. And so you've got to be able to have something every day that you're doing to fight and help reproduce good new healthy cells in the middle of if you go the conventional treatment route of killing off all the bad cells. I mean, so there's there's a dual purpose in what I'm talking about, but it makes a big difference all the way around. 888-283-7272, 888-283-7272. Whatever you're struggling with, we are here to help. Remember, it's all about thriving, and it's all about going to that next level. We want to see you really be able to do that. And so many times people get stuck, and I think they get into a place where they just give up. They're taking three or four medications. They're not dropping the weight that they want to lose but they're eating healthy, and they just get stuck. But the reality is you can make a change. All right, so belly fat's a big topic, and we see a lot of scams out there. And I want to talk to you about the basics so you can understand about maybe spot reduction, you know, lose the belly fat, all that sort of thing. Here are some of the, the, the pieces to understand. Number one, belly fat is a topic. And, and there are all kinds of diet pills and marketing strategies that – market certain areas of the body well turns out that many researchers and health experts are equally preoccupied with belly fat for different reasons in the past 30 years we've learned a tremendous amount about the body's fat store scientists used to see fat as dormant energy reserves but we know that fat's a very active metabolically influential tissue and its health consequences they say can vary greatly so if we focus our attention on the abdominal area there's two major categories you got the subcutaneous fat, which is visible. That's the one you can pinch. Then you got the visceral fat. It's called, also called the intra-abdominal fat, and it lies hidden in around your internal organs. And it turns out these two stores, they behave very differently. The visceral fat appears to be one of the most dangerous types of body fat. 
This inner fat reservoir releases harmful hormones and inflammatory compounds that cause undesirable metabolic changes, which, of course, can lead into heart disease, type 2 diabetes, dementia, and other conditions. It's also impossible to determine how much visceral fat you have without the aid of high-tech equipment. There's a very simple way to get a rough idea. Generally speaking, the body's visceral fat stores is proportional to the amount of visible belly fat. In other words, if you have a beer belly or an apple-shaped figure or a large waist, you're likely to be carrying a lot of unhealthy fat inside. But if you shed your exterior belly fat, then let's talk about what actually happens. So what happens is when you first start losing weight, you'll automatically lose the bad intra-abdominal fat at the fastest rate. So that's the good news. It comes off pretty quickly. Okay, So knowing that, it's your body's most liquid asset. When your body needs energy, it's the easiest source, so it doesn't matter how you choose to shed the pounds. So whether you're cutting calories or ramping up exercise, hopefully you're doing you know both of those, the high-threat visceral fat will be prioritized, and it will knock it out very quickly. So dropping those initial 10 to 20 pounds will typically cause a decrease in blood sugar and insulin levels, blood pressure and cholesterol, and other factors. And there's more good news about it. The one study said that if you continue exercising after you lose weight, you won't regain any of the dangerous intra-abdominal fat. And if you gain back a bit of your initial loss, then you should be good to go. So it's interesting. The diet and the belly fat, too, the single most important factor in losing belly fat is maintaining a negative calorie balance. So eating less than you burn on a daily basis by creating an energy deficit, you'll automatically shed abdominal fat in a higher proportion to those types of fat during the first few months of dieting. So it's, you know, calories in, calories out versus exercise. You probably heard certain foods like nuts, olive oil, berries, vinegar, and green tea can help you torch the belly fat, like, of course, other than the processed foods and that sort of thing. There is some scientific evidence to support the claims on some of these. Green tea has some really good benefits on it. And, of course, obese adults who followed a low-calorie diet while placed on replacing all the refined carbohydrates with more whole foods and fruits and vegetables definitely made a better stride within the weight loss. There was a small study also that looked at people that actually ate a lot of the healthy fats. They dropped belly fat, specifically in body fat. And a new study published recently found that participants who gained weight by overeating saturated fats gain more total body fat relative to muscle and more intra-abdominal fat. So the sunflower oils and the polyunsaturated fat actually help people lose the weight versus saturated fats. Really interesting in all the research of where to go next with, of course, the whole fat loss controversy that all the big diet and fitness gurus are touting. We'll be right back. If you're looking for increased strength, increased endurance, and better recovery, then look no further than an all-natural nutritional supplement called creatine hydrochloride. Concrete is the brand, and it's the most absorbable form of creatine hydrochloride found today. Now, creatine is not just for athletes. You've probably heard that before, but concrete, creatine hydrochloride, is for the everyday person looking to improve their health. Listen, I started taking creatine in college when I was a strength conditioning coach at Florida State University. And I've taken it ever since my college years. And it's made a massive difference in my life. Everything in my body, I believe, is functioning better because of creatine. Creatine hydrochloride I've moved over to using concrete. And it is the best form of creatine on the market. Concrete creatine hydrochloride is available at most Walmart stores and on Walmart.com or any store that carries nutritional supplements. Just make sure to look for concrete brand creatine hydrochloride and watch your endurance your strength and your recovery and your immune system get boosted today to find out more connect with on call radio online at inshapenetwork.com
to a lot of behavioral issues in kids. So children with mothers smoke during the pregnancy. They're saying that are an increased risk for conduct problems and issues. So following rules and behaving in a socially accepted way. Researchers in England analyzed a lot of the data from three studies in order to assess the effects that really smoking during pregnancy can have on children raised uh, by their, their natural mothers. And the Journal of Psychiatry actually looked at this and they found that a lot of the findings suggested an association between smoking during pregnancy and child conduct issues. And this was fully explained or unlikely to be fully explained, they said. But the causal explanation typically is between smoking and what it actually does biochemically to the body. They said in the study that they're trying to locate in uh, through continual studies to find out what those key chemicals are. They don't even know what it is yet. They just know that there's a strong link. And one key, which is, I, I think, vital and really important, I mean, smoking with mothers, not only the birth defect challenges that can happen, but even ongoing. I mean, you know, smoking as the child's an infant at home, the secondhand, thirdhand smoke that they're around, even if you go outside and smoke, bring it back in, you're still wearing it. And it really becomes challenging for the kids. And there are a lot of long-term benefit or long-term, uh, I guess, issues that, that arise of it. So parents, I just, it really encourage you, if you have kids, to just hang it up. Hang it up because it's not worth it. Their life is extremely valuable, as you know, if you're a parent. And it's not worth it, especially if you've got a little baby you're carrying around all the time. You don't need to do smoking because that gets in your clothes, proven third-hand smoke and what it does to the kids. And we've got so much of the behavioral side with children with ADHD and attention issues. There's a lot of that going on, and they're still finding to see if it actually is tied to those or not. But I'll find it interesting as time goes on, and they put two and two together to figure that out. That will be interesting to say the least. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Check us out on the web. Go to the phones now. We're going to go to Todd. Hi, Todd. I had a question about career paths. I'm interested in sports, medical, nutritional training on a professional hockey level. I am interested in alternative medicine, herbal healing, uh, alternative diets for high performance for a. Uh, professional hockey team in my town, which is a Cincinnati Cyclones, and I'm wondering what I am interested already and do a lot of uh, weight training, strength training, flexibility training through yoga, weightlifting, Pilates, running, sprints, etc., and uh, just looking for the best advice I could possibly get for someone looking for a career in this realm. It's a good question. I'll, I'll tell you that if you're really looking to, to be able to teach and, and be involved with a, a, an athletic team, work with nutritional plans and, and sports training and that sort of thing, two degrees or certifications are really important. One would be a registered dietitian for as far as the nutritional side. They, they're becoming the dominant force in nutrition as far as the standard of credential. So that would be, of course, you know, four years. You really don't know to get. You don't need to go get your MD, which is just years and years of training, um, just to do that. You could just go get a registered dietitian, which takes about four years, roughly, a little bit of an internship, and then you'll be good to go. Take you know, pass the exam and and get your license. Now the other is a certified strength conditioning specialist. It's the CSCS, and it's really the gold standard of any athletic training or, or, or sports training uh, for the athlete, whether it's high school, college, or pro. And the CSCS is, is, is world-recognized as that standard credential among strength coaches. So what it means is certified strength conditioning specialist, and really all the strength coaches, they have them nowadays. They used to not, but it's, it's pretty much you're going to find that everywhere you go. And that makes a big difference. It really does. The education to pass that exam is very, very strong. And the knowledge base of what it takes, you, you'll you be right there. with. If you're wanting to go into that field, you'll be right there with any of them that are with all the major league baseball teams, football, hockey, and you'll have the same credential. But then there's the years of experience that 
really no textbook can teach. It's just trial and error and knowing what works, knowing what doesn't, and then knowing your players. And, uh, you know, when I was the assistant strength coach at Florida State, knowing a lot of even what there's the science, but then there's the things that you just know work. And there's certain athletes that you know what works best for them and what gets them. You you start to learn your players and you start to learn what makes them tick and their body chemistry and, and what makes them really thrive and become that elite athlete that they are. So a lot of great tips in that. And I would encourage you to go down those two paths and do some research on it. But those are typically, out of all the different degrees and certifications and all, will probably get you to the, your goal the fastest. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. You're listening to On Call Radio. Check us out on the web. We're here for you, no matter what you're struggling with. Know that if the body can get sick, you can also get well. It's all about lifestyle and the choices that we make every single day. Canada will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. Coming up, we're going to jump in. We've got more questions about your health. And also, we've got some new research you don't want to miss. And our food of the day, one of my favorites, talking about how foods can transform our health. There's so many ways that it can do that. And what we're going to talk about here coming up, it's one of your favorites, I can guarantee you. But you've always thought, oh, I can't eat that because I don't think it's good for me. It's actually a powerful superfood that I'm a big fan that you can actually eat every single day and get great benefits from it. All of that and more of your calls, which I see you waiting there when we come back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. Whatever you're struggling with, realize that the body can get sick, you can also get well. It's all about thriving and not just barely making it and surviving. This show is all about that. Now, our food of the hour, we always talk about different foods and what they can do to the body. And food either brings health to the body or can take health out of the body. We all know that. And the choices that we make every single day, they matter. Well, certain foods can actually help. And coming up in just a moment, we're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to go to the phones and talk with Tanya. Hi, Tanya. I'm about 49 years old, so I was just wondering, I was diagnosed with um, type 2 diabetes a couple years ago. And I just, right, you know, I lost like 35 pounds. I weigh about 135, and I'm 5'8". So I work out and stuff like that, and I eat healthy and take health food supplements, whole food supplements. So I just wonder if someone can be diabetic when they're at that weight. Well, diabetes can come along regardless of what someone's weight is. It really can show itself. And if the pancreas gets tired and the, the insulin receptors get worn down and diabetes can come along pretty quickly. The first you got to figure out what's causing it and again, figure out what nutritional deficiencies might be in the body. That could be some of the root cause of that. And that's really the initial phase of, of how you figure out what's happening. Now, the other key that you want to look at too, that is, is also important diabetes is of course, exercise. And we know now that exercise plays such a big role and diabetes and the management of it just because of what it does, the insulin levels and the blood sugar levels. So first you always want to look at, I mean, as far as moving forward and what do you do, first you want to always get a good game plan together on the eating side. So equal amounts of lean protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, because the protein, the fats help to balance out the carbs, and you put those all together, 
and it makes a tremendous difference. So the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates together in balance, multiple meals throughout the day, about every three to four hours. I like doing six meals a day. Uh, small meals because of the volume, especially if you're dealing with any kind of calorie deficit that you put someone on, that's going to make a big difference too. So you have to jump in and get the body to to really begin to, to kind of function at a completely different level. That's first and foremost. Now, the other key with, with any kind of blood sugar related issue, there's supplements that can help. Gymnema is really good and, and also cinnamon is great at balancing out and, and supporting blood sugar levels. Vanadyl sulfate is old school. It, it works for some people, but you have to be careful if you deal with depression because it can kind of trigger that. And then also chromium picolinate. Chromium picolinate is a, a kind of an old school one too, but it's been around. It's proven. All the research is great at, at supporting what we call insulin sensitivity, which is a, a great way. It helps the receptors to work a little bit better. But those are all very, very good. I mean, when it comes down to it, make sure they get the fats in. The fats, I think, is one of the, are one of the best kept secrets of staying healthy. Getting enough of your healthy fats in every single day. Even people that are athletes and whatnot tend to shy away from too much fat. But it's the good monounsaturated fats that our bodies work so well off of, and that's really what you have to look at. It just comes down to calories and and your macronutrients and, and getting the right combination. And all that is at our website. You can find all that information there to really help you and, and kind of you know coach you and encourage you through that entire process. But know that your body can do better. Definitely better than what you're dealing with today, that's for sure. 888 Lines are open with questions about your health. Give us a call or go to the website. And our food of the hour, you're going to love. I mean, you're really going to love it. Did I say you're going to love it? You're going to love it. Dark chocolate. And you think, well, yeah, I've heard it's healthy, but like I eat a couple of squares like every week. Well, guess what? You can eat it more than that. A lot of the benefits of dark chocolate come. Uh, European Journal of Nutrition found that eating these antioxidant-rich chocolate, of course, about 70% uh, cocoa or greater, has incredible benefits. matter of fact, they can increase a lot of the moisture in the skin by about 25%. So you get fewer sunburns. British researchers gave two groups, women, dark chocolate or milk chocolate for 12 weeks. At the end of the study, those with dark chocolate had doubled their protection against UV rays. And basically, the one with milk chocolate had no benefit. Think about that. What the cocoa does, it boosts the blood circulation to the fine capillaries in the top layer of the skin and the vessels that are better equipped to draw oxygen and nutrients that protect the skin against dehydration and burns. Healthier teeth is another reason to be doing the dark chocolate. It usually the sugar in the chocolate candies that rot your teeth, but cocoa actually protects them. Cocoa bean husk contain antibacterial compounds that inhibit the formation of plaque and biofilms where the cavity causing bacteria can thrive. In fact, in a new study recently, they found that it can reduce plaque by almost 50%. Interesting. Reduce a lot of the cravings and weight gain, too. Cocoa is rich in fiber and protein, and it's a standardized, um, standard-sized dark chocolate bar that contains 4 grams to 8 to 9 grams, respectively. Researchers from the Netherlands found that people who smelled 85% dark chocolate reported that their appetite levels dropped in half. So just smelling the dark chocolate actually reduced the cravings and overall weight gain. It's pretty amazing. Healthier heart, too. So chocolate's often kind of vilified because it contains cocoa butter, which is high in saturated fat. But it turns out that the other forms of fat, such as coconut oil, cocoa butter, could actually be good for you. About one-third of the fat in cocoa butter with stearic acid actually converts to a healthy monounsaturated fat called oleic acid, which lowers the levels of LDL cholesterol. So you need certain saturated fats. We've always known this for the omega-3 fatty acids to work better. And this is one of the reasons why. Matter of fact, they've always recommended taking a lot of the butter fat with fish oil because it increases the absorption of it. Matter of fact, cod liver oil works much better with taking some kind of butter oil. Helps to reduce blood pressure. Also helps with the re- reduction of a lot of the platelets that can stick together. So sharper focus is another one. The MRIs, of course, studies have shown that chocolate boosts blood circulation to the brain, which can improve the ability to focus. 
So taking a small amount of cocoa flavonoids for five days led to better blood flow to the brain in healthy adults who were performing typical cognitive tasks. Less anxiety, too. So people that deal with a lot of anxiety, so if you take Xanax and you're dealing with any kind of the benzodiazepines, know that the dark chocolate might help. The stress prompts the body to produce cortisol, which is pretty common in everybody, which an added downside of triggering the accumulation of abdominal or visceral fat that builds up around your organs, and then that contributes to depression along with heart disease and stroke. But a 2009 study found that people who ate 40 grams, that's about an ounce, of chocolate every day for two weeks saw decreases in the levels of cortisol in their systems compared to its levels at the start of the study. Another study said that a year later, over the course of 30 days, people who ate cocoa daily had 10% lower levels of anxiety. It's pretty incredible when you think about it. Something that easy, and we're huge fans of dark chocolate. Matter of fact, we recommend it to all of our clients, and we recommend it to, to anybody. I mean, all my teachings, I teach this. All of our lifestyle providers are big promoters of dark chocolate just because of what it does to the body. Now, boosting your pre-exercise workout levels can be another big one, too. So the dark chocolate can help cut down on the post-workout soreness. Cocoa has these catechins with the two kinds of antioxidants that increase your muscles' absorption of nutrients that create energy, which can help you really get energized to work out and help you through the workout. In one study... The energizing antioxidants produced about 30% increase in fatigue resistance. So likewise, a lot of the anti-inflammatory compounds you'll find in cocoa help tremendously. The key to reaping all the benefits, though, is is the 40 grams a day. I mean, that's the key. So it's about one ounce. So don't start hammering, you know, and and putting down half of a chocolate bar every day and think you're going to get these benefits. It's, It's just one ounce. And roughly the size of the end of the joint in your thumb. So it's about... One to two squares a day. And really, it could be just enough at night after dinner to get that little bit of that little bit of sweet tooth taken care of, but it can make a tremendous difference in your overall health if you stay consistent with it. And how hard is it to eat a couple of squares of chocolate a day? I mean, really? Pretty exciting. So but I love that's what I love about foods, because so much we look at medicine and supplements. To come in and save the day and be the silver bullet and come in and and transform the way we feel. But reality is that so much lies in our foods. And as much as the wrong kinds of foods, and this happens often, as much as the wrong kind of food can put us in a, a deficit where we're really struggling, the right kind of foods can really make a difference. And they can really help us along the way. And they can really get us where we need to go as far as our health. But it's about making the right kind of decisions. And, and really, at the end of the day, that's what it, it's like that with anything. But it really is with our overall health. Go to our website. Check it out. All kinds of information. And if you miss something on the show, typically you can find it there as we do a lot of our recaps. And then our new app is out. So check that out where you can also listen to the show right there on your smartphone or your tablet anytime throughout the day. All kinds of great tips and tools that we can have to help you get the help that you need with your health. Coming up, more questions about your health. Also, I'm going to jump in. Got some calls. I see you there. And I've got some fitness tips to help you drop the weight you don't want to miss. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, it's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. Connect
up with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. What are you struggling with? We want to help. Diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, fibromyalgia. If the body can get sick, it can also get well. It's all about making the best choices and decisions so you can thrive, so you don't have to be stuck. And remember, the choices we make today can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. Let's go to the phones, talk with Johnny. Hi, Johnny. My issue I'm calling about, uh, the main one is, this past uh, week, a few days ago, I had a blood spot in my eye when I woke up in the morning. And I looked up, and I think it was called a subjunctival hemorrhage or something like that. And uh, it's mostly gone away, a little bit next to the pupil still. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really, those type of issues, pretty simple. And a very close friend of mine is a... Uh, top ophthalmologist and and they'll even tell you that the the sub um, conjunctival hemorrhages are pretty they can happen when the vessels get weak you can actually scratch the eye rub your eye in the middle of the night not even know it and create that the vessels could be a little bit weak in that area um, and can cause it as well but typically the rule of thumb with with blood in the eyes is if if you can see the blood in the sclera and you can really see it uh, typically it's not that big of a deal if you can't see it and you can only see it and you see it internally in the eye upon exam that's when it's a big deal so that it just keep in mind it usually takes about they say 14 days for the blood to clear for the the, the body to reabsorb and to break down the fibrin and all that within the blood so it typically takes about 14 days to do that, and it'll clear out on its own. But, yeah, it can be scary. But more than anything, it'll freak you out when you see um, the blood. It'll make you very concerned uh, with anybody. But the good news is that typically the more you can see like that, the less dangerous it is. Our skin, of course, is our largest organ, if you didn't know. And there's a lot of issues that can cause skin damage. And, of course, wrinkles, redness, and even skin cancer can result by getting too much sun exposure. But before you stop getting out in the sun too much, here's a couple of things we need to talk about. So number one, the sun's the biggest cause of skin damage. We know for a fact, and of course, Fermi Same, who is a dermatologist at Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia, said the ultraviolet rays of the sun break down the collagen and elastin, which help to keep your skin looking very plump and smooth. It affects the melanocytes, which can lead to your ch- uh, changes in your skin pigmentation. And the aging effects of the sun eventually show in your skin as wrinkles or the age spots. Those are the brown spots, the little patches that show up and possibly even skin cancer. So to avoid the skin damage can result by a lot of the uh, damage in the sun. Dermatologists advise staying out of the sun during the middle of the day when the sun's rays are the strongest in wearing protective clothing like a hat or broad spectrum sunscreen, one that can protect against both types of harmful uh, rays. And don't forget to reapply, to about every two hours for maximum protection. Now, free radicals are another big deal, it's something we talk a lot about, but you know, a lot of people don't really know what they are. But the free radicals, of course, one of the ways the sun damages the skin through uh, the production of harmful substances cause free radicals. They can actually damage DNA, which is kind of our blueprint, and cause skin damage. But free radicals may even play a role in the development of skin cancer, they say. So some skin care products contain antioxidants like vitamin C and E, that help to lessen the aging effects of the free radicals that they have on the skin. So eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, which contain the antioxidants, especially like the berries, the broccoli, the carrots, and spinach is really good for creating healthy skin. Now, obviously, avoiding cigarettes is a big deal, but because of the nicotine and the smoking in itself, it actually creates uh, dehydration in the skin and has a tendency to wrinkle a lot easier. It's because smoking cigarettes causes all the blood vessels to constrict and they get more narrow. And the more that happens, 
the more it creates an aging process and, and creates the, the wrinkles. So if you're a big smoker, you're going to get more wrinkles. That's the bottom line. When you smoke, the skin gets less oxygen and less nutrients. Causes it to, to wrinkle, to sag. So the more you smoke, the more it's going to happen, period. So the bigger the number, the more skin damage you're going to have. Even the nicotine gum inhalers, lozenges, nasal spray, and patches can help you quit. So look into a viable option for you. Even acupuncture is great for kicking the habit. Now, irritants, too, are really important. So a lot of the chemicals and cleaning products, laundry detergents, can cause a lot of the red, irritated skin and allergies that people deal with. So you want to be careful with that. The easiest way to protect your skin from irritants is just to avoid the contact. Smiles and the frowns, the simple fact you age, your skin loses elasticity and it doesn't snap back into place after you make a lot of the facial expressions. So as a result, your skin will show wrinkles even when you're not frowning or laughing. So no one would say to stop loving life, but again... That's where Botox comes in. So a lot of people jump onto the Botox wagon because it kind of freezes that area. So you might also consider using over-the-counter prescription wrinkle creams or other topical medications to smooth out the skin. Also, there's a host of procedures that are available to reduce the the wrinkles, including the microdermabrasion and chemical peels, laser resurfacing, uh, resurfacing, and, of course, injectable fillers like collagen. They can really minimize it, and they can. I mean, again, if you need it, do it. But at the end of the day, take good care of your skin with your nutrition, staying out of the sun, drinking plenty of water, getting plenty of green tea, which is great, and doing everything you can to take care of the largest organ on the body. Make sure to check out our website. There you can find all the information if you missed anything on the show. It puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer, J. Patrick Engineer, John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on this show, and together we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. You can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora. For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over. But check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.